Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Carl O'Connor, as it says there, and I'm uh, not really going to talk about uh, community planning, but more about the types of institutions that will um, have to deal with community planning um, week in, week out, hopefully. Um, to look at the, um, uh, I suppose the primary institution that would be the, the, the councils, and I've decided to look at Belfast City Council for, um, I suppose it just so happens that I was looking at Belfast City Council for other reasons, but um, it fits in nicely um, uh, as, a, as a case study because I suppose it is one of the uh, uh, most important city councils that we do have, um, uh, or one of the most important councils that we do have in, in Northern Ireland. Um, the research question that I'm asking, I suppose, is when greater powers are to be devolved uh, to these new super councils, what type of institutions uh, will inherit these powers? To answer that question, I've posed three further questions, um, as you do. Uh, do bureaucrats have discretion? And if they do have discretion, where do they have discretion? There's no point in saying bureaucrats have discretion unless we know in what circumstances they have discretion. And then the final question then related to the, those two uh, questions is then how is this discretion exercised? What guides people when they make these decisions um, uh, where they have the capacity to, to, to influence policy? So, um, accordingly, I've divided the presentation to two parts, part one and part two. Uh, the first part of the presentation looks at do bureaucrats have um, discretion, and the second, uh, or, oh, and as part of that, uh, that part, it looks at, um, uh, it asks where do they have discretion. And in the second part of the presentation, I look at how this discretion is exercised. So, um, why is this topic interesting? Well, while a lot of the time we spend uh, our time looking at uh, what policy to implement, but once we've decided what policy to implement, uh, we have to go implement it. And uh, often policies can be skewed or employed uh, differently, um, uh, depending on the implementing body or the uh, implementing individual. So that's why I'm interested in the implementation process. The key findings, uh, for those of you who won't make it all the way through the presentation, are that bureaucrats have discretion in certain policy areas. Not in all policy areas, in some policy areas. Um, this discretion is then exercised differently by different bureaucrats, but two similar typologies emerge. So. While we are all individuals, well, we all fit in boxes as well. And two nice little boxes emerge of how um, uh, we can categorize and then predict uh, bureaucrat behavior. The um, final finding, I suppose, is uh, most relevant is that Belfast City Council is actually a very competent council and demonstrates um, a high level of professionalism. So we. In the case of Belfast, we don't need to be, uh, I wouldn't have any concerns about devolving a whole rake of powers to Belfast. I found the council to be exceedingly competent in terms of its officials. I had no contact at all with members, uh, but in terms of its officials, they were absolutely fantastic and very high caliber, and that will come through throughout the presentation. The um, implications for policy, therefore, then, is you know, the council is competent. Uh, to deal with complex problems, and also, um, as will become apparent throughout the presentation, is the study of public administration as a discipline is very important if we're to understand the policy failures. Why, if we have this beautiful policy that we all agree would be amazing, why doesn't it work? And that's the study of public administration. And you can see in Belfast City Council a very high caliber of public administrator um, or bureaucrat. And uh, that, I suppose, goes some way um, to uh, me calling, um, uh, a reason behind me calling Belfast City Council a very competent council. They, are, they have competent people um, making the decisions. The, um, 
And there's a note there for the research, but we, we don't have much time, so I'll carry on. Now, in this graph here, you see um, uh, importance or salience of an issue on the left and uncertainty or complexity of an issue on the, uh, on the x-axis. When um, an issue is uh, not very complex and not very important, the public don't regard it as a major issue, something like bin collection, I suppose, as long as your bins are being collected, you don't really care about it. Uh, that's where we expect bureaucrats to have most influence on the decision-making process. Where the issue gets a bit more complex, um, but public um, interest remains low, um, things like corporate taxation, etc. You know, the, the general public might have a passing interest, but not a not not a, not a very high uh, level of interest. It's not going to determine voting behaviour. Um, well, what we have here is a, a technocratic logic um, guiding decision making, again largely with bureaucrats involved. But the area I'm most interested in is this area where the issue is not terribly complex um, or not terribly uncertain, um, but the public will attribute a high degree of importance to it. And that's the area where we expect the politicians to have most influence and impact on policy because obviously it's, uh, it's not very complex, they can get their heads around it without doing too much extra research, and the public can get their heads around it as well because, again, it's a, it, it's a simple issue to grasp and um, it means a lot to them. So that's the area where we expect politicians to have most influence on outcomes, where there is low uncertainty and complexity and high public interest. So... For the case of Belfast, I've divided this uh, quadrant into two um, sections. Um, I think they're on the next slide. Yes, uh, decision type B and a decision type C here. Low technical complexity, high public interest, one-off decisions, and type C, low technical complexity, high public interest, day-to-day -day decisions. And the reason for doing so will become apparent as I go through into the next slide. The, um, so just to recap, in the first decision type here, uh, sorry, in all three decision types, we expect that the um, uh, politician will, uh, sorry, start, I do apologize. In type A, we expect the bureaucrat to trump the politician in terms of decision out, outputs, outcomes. And in type B and type C, we expect the politician to trump the bureaucrat. Okay? Now, um, this is on your sheet as well if you can't make it out. The, um, because we don't have much time, I'm not going to go into the table in uh, much detail, but I'm going to uh, say that in decision type A, it's in line with our expectations, the bureaucrats um, trump the, the politicians in terms of the... Um, uh, uh, policy outputs and policy outcomes. Um, they, this is not to say that they have uh, a free reign, free will to do what they like. They are guided by regulations, budgets, etc., um, uh, treaties. That uh, they, they do um, rely. Uh, they are guided largely by technical criteria and regulation when when making decisions. In decision type B. Um, the example at the time that was used would be um, was the, the stadium that was proposed for Belfast. Um, at this time, there was also an incinerator that was supposed to be built in uh, uh, North Belfast. And again, these were um, areas um, uh, where the bureaucrats were very much in favour of these, um, uh, or sorry, in terms of the incinerator, the bureaucrats were very much in favour of it. Um, uh, politicians were against it, it didn't happen, and the, the vice versa in terms of the stadium, the bureaucrats were uh, very much against it, and the politicians were very much in favour of it. As it happened, it didn't come off anyway, but that wasn't uh, to do with the, um, with, with the council's decision making. But here we see in decision type C, where we expect, in everyday decision making, we expect the politicians to Trump, their influence to trump that of the bureaucrats. But here we actually find that the influence of the bureaucrat trumps that of the, of the politician. 
So you're talking about everyday decisions like uh, the provision of community wardens, where alley gates go up. Why um, can you not have um, all of the alley gates going to one uh, section of Belfast where there's most need? Who, who, who decides where they go? Um, budgets are tight. Decisions have to be made. And we find that those decisions are made not by the political level, but by the bureaucratic level. And the political level, in the main, are quite happy for that to be the case. The, again, this does not mean that the bureaucrats act freely as they would want to and just dump all the resources in their own cosy communities. They are guided by um, the by technical criteria, um, as you'll see from the next section, they're, they're, um, uh, they rely a lot on uh, reports and studies that they do in-house and that they also contract out. But um, they're guided by um, technical criteria and also the political saleability. A bureaucrat may, uh, or a director may say, uh, this is what I actually want. I know I'm not going to get it but I will frame it in such a way that I will try and give each of the politicians something that they will go along with the main thrust of my argument or the main thrust of what I want to achieve. And what we find here is that in that decision type, um, the uh, influence of the bureaucrat trumps that of the politician. So given that bureaucrats have a very um, influential role on policy outcomes, I suppose we need to know, well, what guides them in their decision-making then? And that brings us to our um, oh, uh, second question. Uh, second question, how is this discretion um, exercised? And to do this, I've, uh, there was a not so complex methodology, but a methodology that I'm not going to go into it uh, right now. But um, wh what happens is you, um, uh, what emerges from it are two different categories um, or two typologies of, um, of bureaucrat. Um, it doesn't have to be two. In a similar study I did in Brussels, I ended up with three. So it's, uh, as it just so happened, uh, two similar um, uh, um, uh, typologies emerged in Belfast. And I, they're called, imaginatively, factor one and factor two. So... Um, I'll present you the, the, the findings on the graph, but there is a table in your handout uh, where I suppose it's a more accurate representation of the two factors. So if you wanted to, to study it later, I suppose, I wouldn't be paying much attention to the graphs. Look at the table for, for, for the accuracy. But for ease of presentation, I'm going to use the graphs. And the theoretical framework for this was that, well, as an individual, you could be completely responsive to the political level. You could be completely responsive to your own ethno-political community. You could have completely, well, you can't have neutral values, but neutrality values. Um, or you could um, have a, um, a professional representative identity in that you represent some technocratic criteria such as um, uh, Allevi alleviating poverty or to uh, reducing um, uh, the effect of the city on climate change or whatever it is, but some professional attachment, something that you, a secondary identity that you um, learn or adopt. And here in factor one, we see that this first group um, are a little bit responsive to the political level. They do value neutrality to some extent, but they don't prioritize it. They would never dream of representing their own ethno-political communities, but they're firmly inside in the professional representation category. They see themselves as, it is my role in life, be it on a Friday evening at 7 o'clock or be it on a Monday morning at 9, my passion is to reduce the regulatory burden or my passion is to improve the quality of uh, air in Belfast. Or what, they, they are wedded to these ideas, and they really are passionate about them. And that's what guides them in instances of discretion. So when they have the ability to influence policy, this idea um, takes hold, that this, this is what, um, what guides them in their decision-making. Again, for that same typology, 
or factor. The, um, I asked, um, I wanted to see where they were on the right-left um, axis in terms of the state, should the state facilitate services and should we contract services out, or should the state directly provide the service? Well, this factor definitely are on the, uh, on the left-hand side of the, of the spectrum where they would like to see the state directly providing the service. The, they do balance equity with efficiency. So because we, or these bureaucrats operate within a contested society, well, often you have to choose between, well, do you make the most efficient use of your resources or do you make the most equitable use of resources? And this um, uh, typology say, well, yes, you, you, you should uh, try and balance the two where possible. Um, you can look into the results a bit further um, and on the table that's done, um, uh, where you can see how equity and how efficiency are interpreted, and there's a nice story to be told there too. And to give you more of a, a feeling about how this, um, uh, the main um, uh, ideals of this factor, this typology, or this group of public administrators, um, these are some statements that they really strongly agreed with. Administrators are not neutral. They should be committed to good management and social equity as values. They recommend positions that, per that they perceive to represent the needs and interests of the entire urban public. So unlike the, the politicians who would see themselves as representing a, uh, a section of the, of the city, bureaucrats always felt that they represented the city in its entirety. As I'm involved in policy making, it's my role to advance the needs of those less well-off in society, regardless of background. I take the initiative in proposing policies mobilizing support for these policies and questioning policies that may run counter to the general public interest. The best way to ensure efficient public service to the entire urban public is through public sector reform. And in their daily work, they value the, the, the opinion of um, uh, think tanks and other organizations. I'll leave those there for you to read in your own time as well. The second typology differs slightly. There was a lot of overlap between these two typologies, especially compared to research in other cities. So there's not a high degree of divergence. But where they do differ is that while the first typology are very much um, in favor of, um, are guided by their own uh, professional interests, and these guide them in their decision making, this typology is quite different in that while they have a um, a professional um, identity and representation, they attribute much more importance to political, um, uh, the political representatives and their opinions and to the neutrality of the organization. Um, so that they will stand up to the political level if they believe the political level are acting inappropriately, except, I'm sorry, how do I go back? if they believe the political level are acting inappropriately, etc. So, um, I suppose in a nutshell to, 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 to differentiate the two typologies, this factor would be more willing to go out and seek the um, ideas of the political level and then actively try and implement them, as opposed to the first typology where their own professional interests guide them. Uh, so a, a, a slight difference between the, between the two. Um, in terms of um, uh, the, the right-left divide, again, this factor are on the, 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 the left of the, of the spectrum. And in terms of equity and efficiency, this factor would favor efficiency uh, more so than equity. Um, and that, again, is, is quite interesting. Um, given that it is a, uh, uh, that they operate within a contested society. Um, the statements, the, the key agree statements for, for this typology, my daily work, I represent the elected government of the city, so we see that slight difference already. Uh, my role is to carry out the wishes of the urban government. The legitimacy of my decisions is grounded in uh, procedures established by law, so this is an, again neutrality, very important. Um, bureaucracy should be staffed by professionally trained, technically competent individuals. Again, the, the, the technical um, uh, side of an administration. While these people are very much in favor 
um, of um, a professional organization. It is the more along the Weberian style of public administration that we are there to implement what you, the politicians, tell us to implement. We are not paid to have the idea in, in, the, in, the, in the first place. So a slight difference between the two typologies. Um, I suppose um, to move on to the, the details of these findings, um, uh, factor alignment or typology alignment does not correlate with national identity or with religious affiliation. There's absolutely no correlation whatsoever. There are a number of core beliefs that overlap um, uh, both typologies that are held by all respondents. And you have uh, a list of some of them there. Equity um, uh, is more important than efficiency. Um, is a, 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 while uh, equity itself is interpreted differently um, and more importance um, in certain circumstances may be attributed to efficiency than to equity. And by factor two, the, um, uh, if it came to it, equity would, would um, uh, uh, between both ethno-political groups um, would, would take precedence. Both factors have a commitment to good governance, um, and, but are also not willing to um, uh, follow the rules of the bureaucracy under all circumstances. In the, and again, there's a slight uh, difference in how this is interpreted. Uh, factor one would um, uh, throw away the rules if, if for the greater good of society. Uh, factor two would throw away the rules if their um, uh, political masters said, um, uh, and there was an agreement, a uh, cross-party agreement, that um, uh, the rules should be, should be broken, well then, uh, bureaucrats would try and stand up to that uh, for a, a significant period, but in the end, the, 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 the weight of the politician would trump that of the bureaucrat. Both factors involved in, in, are involved in the conflict management process. Um, so this idea of the bureaucrat just uh, taking uh, policies from the politician going and implementing uh, them is, uh, doesn't hold true, that they actually manage the governance process. They manage the political process. They're involved in the everyday managing of government um, uh, within the city council, um, which I think is, is very important in terms of developing administrative capacity. If these people are in charge of, or uh, de facto in charge of maintaining a system of governance, well then, um, uh, we need to have competent uh, uh, capacity, um, uh, administrative capacity. And um, finally, um, I don't want to create the impression that bureaucrats just run amok and do what they like. Um, they don't. Um, they're guided. Th there's uh, political neutrality um, and impartiality are of paramount importance. Um, uh, they may be guided by uh, different. Um, uh, outside interests, uh, but these are always um, professional interests. Um, and a lot of these people are, uh, in fact, every one of them that I met were very, um, uh, not only competent, but very passionate about, about public service. So what is the policy contribution from all of this? Well, hopefully it's given an insight into policy making within a council in Northern Ireland that and hopefully I've demonstrated that there is a very high capacity um, of individual within the city council. I can't speak for the other city or other councils, but uh, within Belfast, the, 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 there's a very high level of uh, capacity. Um, these officials do have discretion, uh, not in all policy areas, but in some. And um, the, um, while we have... Um, uh, while bureaucrats do have uh, independence to, and discretion in certain areas, um, we can categorize these bureaucrats into two typologies which um, will uh, hopefully help us predict how um, uh, certain policies would be implemented. I.e., if you have a, a policy that would be quite right-wing, well, you see here that both of our typologies would be center-left, so maybe you could try and... Uh, uh, repackage your policy in some way to appeal to those uh, implementing the policy. The um, final thing I want to say is as values guide behavior. Um, we can now tailor um, policy programs that work with 
as opposed to working against uh, those charged with implementing policy. So hopefully the study has identified the um, type of person within the city council and it's much easier to implement your policy if you work with people as opposed to working against them. And uh, um, I suppose that was the, the, the primary um, idea that I wanted to get across. Thank you. Thank you very much.